Behind us today are two very reliable SUVs that are wanted by a lot of people, but there happens to be some bias between these two SUVs, and that's why we're here to clear today. So, she's live with me, and I am Car Continent. So, before we go further, please do well to subscribe to our YouTube channels, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and every other social media platform so you don't miss any episode of our bit series. Then when you do that, be sure to tell us at the end of this video, after watching this video, which between these two SUVs you think is the better one to own. This 2012 Mercedes ML350 started the W166 generation, which ran all the way to the year 2019. And it is a very beautiful, durable, strong machine and affordable too, which is why everybody wants one. And they're always this indecisive or undecisive of which to go for especially when you have these two put together anyway right in front here you have this beauty that is this car you have this beautiful front look you have this mercedes grill that just reminds you that you are driving something of european prestige you have your led headlamps you have fog lamps great ground clearance and something that is to die for of course on the side here you have your 19 inch rims which are very beautiful six four brake pistons rather in the front two's in the rear and you get your blue efficiency badge meaning that this particular unit here built in the year 2012 consumes less fuel than the regular mercedes ml350 still on the side you have your side mirror that is power folding with side indicators you have blind spot detection warning you have this beautiful running board that eases your entry into the car which is really good and they're moving all the way to the back of course and behind here you get this beautiful look so it looks like a mature suv like it's supposed to be that full-size executive type suv and one would think it's that if not for the older brother the gl of course but yes you have this and then even with all of this design you have a beautiful power tailgates which anchors you into all of the space we're referring to 36 cubic feet of space here with the second row seats up that is a lot of space for an suv of this side so while this is the best selling rx350 lexus ever produced for now i'll take you on this one the first thing i have to say is this has a better angle of attack compared to the ml350 so that's why i'm opting for this car that's one so i have normal xenon headlamps and normal bulbs as daytime running lights with good grill space that allows air going to the engine. Um, 19 inch rims, smart entry, which is optional on that car. So you might buy one today and then there's no smart entry in it. Okay, I have side blinkers, chrome finishing, and overall the side of this car is very, very fine. Oh, one more thing. I have better ground clearance on the side compared to the ML350. It's an SUV for crying out loud. Why would I be driving a local and call it an SUV? Cool. Though I don't get LED lamps here, but they are still very fine, casual. And I have parking sensors behind this car. Um, the boot space of that ML is wider than this, but I have reclining and adjustable seats. So I get to get more space in this particular car. For, for crying out loud, what exactly do you want to carry? This space is enough. Now, I have a very, very level-headed compartment i don't know how lexus managed to do this but they do this here and they do it in engine bay they arrange every single thing properly and it's always detailed the design of the mercedes ml cabin was inspired by the w212 generation of the e-class and i would say it is beautiful it is exquisite and it is like i said earlier very executive so you have very durable high quality build materials right here in the cabin i mean we're talking about this beautiful wood trim right here you have soft to touch leather that is very premium and very durable and you have that all over the car even beautifully you have a panel sunroof which that rx doesn't have and you know when you see a panel sunroof in a car what that means right it is just a beauty a sight to behold in the middle here of course you have your beautiful multimedia screen which uses the mercedes command interface further lower you have the controls for the multimedia screen here you have your heated seat function of course you have your traction control and your heel descent and climb assist functions even below you have dual zone climate control and 
further down you have a lot of storage so you have storage in here you have two cup holders more storage in here of course this toggle for your multimedia screen and beautifully you have this more storage here as well of course when it comes to this you have beautiful soft to touch leather seats that have eight-way power adjustability and it is just very comfortable and the seating capacity right here in front is amazing because you get a lot of room which is really cool so in this particular segment you have your gauge cluster which is both digital and analog which you can actually toggle through if you just use these buttons on this side of the stand while on this side you get buttons that control a multimedia system and you also get voice control behind the steering wheel you have two beautiful paddle shifters to toggle through your gears and you have your beautiful gear selector right here on this side of course you will have other levers that perform other functions like your windshield wiper your cruise control and all of that this beautiful steering here has this very sturdy feel it is leather and it just feels very easy and nice to hold right and even more interestingly it uses the eps an electric power steering system so driving is pretty beautiful with this car let's talk about how much space it is that we have here so we talked about space in the trunk space in the front but here at the back you get the option to take this all the way down flat thus practically doubling the amount of capacity or the capacity you have right there in the trunk and so you can swing in as many stuff it is as you want which is pretty great so now to get in here oh, pretty easy pretty comfortable you have oh i have rather a lot of leg room a lot of headroom even as i have a beautiful roof, sort of roof right here and it's just amazing so not only do you get a lot of space in this car this car is very practical for example right here at the back you have two extra cup holders on the armrest if you just take this back up you have extra ac vents you have a 12 volt socket you even have a 115 volt socket right there for your laptop which is pretty great you have this beautiful grab handle of course you get reading lights at the back this leather here is beautiful and very comfortable and in this suv you also get standard driver and safety technology features which include your abs of course you have traction and stability control as well as others and then optional for optional features you have lane departure warning and a lot i mean this is a 2012 suv so those are pretty optional back in those days but anyway guys tell me what exactly about the ml it is that you like because there's so many things in here i mean the comfort and luxury that this suv gives you the the plushness of this cabin you miss all of that in the rx 350. so i have enough headroom enough legroom it were adjustable seats, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. See? We both in heated and ventilated seats. I have reverse camera on this one. Since it's a basic option, I have the reverse camera here. But for the full option, you have the reverse camera standard here. And also I have dual zone climate control. I have very plush finishing on this interior. I have cup holders here. I have a bottle holder there and here too. I want to drink beer, feel now. Standard. <laughs> anyway, so I have this mouse to control my infotainment system. We both do not have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so we, we, we do Bluetooth compatibility here. So you see, I have a lot more to play with in this car. Now, there's something else I want to tell you guys. When you buy this car from factory, they give you three keys, and each key adapts to its own owner. So if I come in today, I sit like this, it has that memory. If the next person comes in with another key, and sits um, his own has his own sitting. It has its own memory. So three memory for whoever is entering inside this car. I have analog and digital speed clock here. I have cruise control. I have voice command, active voice command. Then push to start is standard here on that car. It's optional though. So what I have rear AC vents here, I have enough head and leg room. See, if I was going for a biking competition, I would still have enough space to carry my helmet. Now, I have cup holders here, enough storage compartments, bottle holders on the edge, and I have eight speakers in this car, so I can even do mini bedu inside. See, this is, this, this, that's why it's an SUV, for all the space. I'll carry somebody here, carry another one here, carry another one here. 
stretch my leg the way I like. That's why I'm buying the Lexus. Enough space. 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine. 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine. Six speed automatic transmission. Seven speed automatic. 270 horsepower with 335 newton meter of torque. 302 horsepower with 370 newton meters of torque. Front wheel drive or an optional all wheel drive. Standard for matrix or you can get some at rear wheel driven SUV. 0 to 100 in 7.3 seconds. 0 to 100 in 7 seconds flat. But mine has a better fuel efficiency than yours. 20 miles per gallon. What's the difference between 20 miles per gallon and 19 miles One per gallon? mile, one whole mile. If easy, run and we will see. While I can drive this in water anytime safely, your steering rack is electric. Once it enters water, it starts dancing. Really, really expensive to maintain, you know that, right? But your steering response still feels a bit finicky, right? And if you take out the cost of maintenance when it comes to the steering rack on my car, both cars actually cost about the same to maintain. Anyway, nonetheless, these two cars offer very composed handling, like the ride quality in both cars are very amazing. They are also very good daily drivers. So I want you to tell us in the comment section, having seen everything it is that we've shown you about both cars, which do you think is the better car for you to own and why? So we've come to the end of this particular episode of our car comparison series. Please give us a like and share this video with your friends. Meanwhile, tell us the cars you'd like us to compare next and we'll do well to listen to you guys. Thank you very much.